What is the proper way to test? I've heard that the hair test doesn't really work. You hear these things. There's a lot of misinformation. Probably the, the greatest problem for me in uh, promoting our approach to detoxification is all of the, and our approach to testing, is uh, re-educating everybody. There's a lot of mythology out there about how to do testing. The hair, for example, is a relatively good measure of your exposure to fish-based mercury, but it shows nothing at all about your exposure to dental mercury. A lot of naturopaths are out there testing hair, thinking they're, they're looking at dental mercury toxicity when all they're looking at is how much fish a person eats. One of the other common ways that are used by uh, practitioners are what are called challenge tests. In challenge tests, you take a pharmaceutical chelator, measure the urine before and after using the pharmaceutical chelator. This would be like DMPS or DMSA? DMPS or DMSA, also EDTA is used, and you see how much extra mercury or other metals comes out when you take these pharmaceutical chelators. Now, the problem with this testing is that, number one, for people who are really sick, taking those chelators to provoke all that movement of metals can often make them much sicker. So, the very people that you need to help the most, you're hurting the most when you do this. The other problem, then, is that these people who are often very sick have reduced kidney function. And so, when you give them these chelators, they're often not able to translate that mobilization of mercury into movement out through the urine. So, they'll actually produce a false negative. In fact, in one study recently in New Zealand, they found that the people who had the highest challenge test which would normally be thought of as the most toxic, were the easiest people to detoxify and felt the best after you ran them through uh, a course of using some DMPS. The people who had the lowest DMPS challenge tests uh, actually felt the worst after the challenge and were the hardest ones to detoxify. They weren't effectively moving the metals out of the body, they were just moving them around in the body, which was making them sicker. So that the process that we use for mercury testing in specific uh, is to do what's called a mercury speciation test. In this, we look at a panel of blood, hair, and urine. We separate the different forms of mercury in the blood. You have the uh, dental form and the organic or fish-based form. Normally, if people look ju just at total mercury in the blood, the fish-based form will overwhelm the dental form and you won't see the two, uh, you won't see the effect of the dental over the fish. Once you separate the two and put them in their own reference ranges, you can see very clearly how much dental mercury the person is accumulating versus how much uh, fish-based or dietary mercury they're accumulating. Then when you compare the dental mercury to the urinary output, urine is all dental mercury, you can see how well the kidneys are working. When you compare the fish-based or dietary mercury in the blood to what's coming out in the hair, which is all a fish-based uh, excretion of mercury, you can see how well the person is mobilizing or excreting the fish-based form of mercury. So the blood is your reservoir of the two forms, and the hair and the urine are giving you indices of how well you're excreting those forms. Then when we move on to detoxification, we know where to focus in the body, which part of the body needs more support before we get into the active detoxification and during the active detoxification. People who aren't mobilizing the forms of mercury well are the most difficult to detoxify, and those are the ones that you can get sicker when you go to detoxify them. On the other hand, if you support the pathways before you really start to move the mercury, then you can get them well without injuring them. You know, I'm thinking of several people in my own family who might want to take this test who are full of amalgams and whatnot. Um, where, where do you go to get this testing system that you're using? Do you go to your website or how do people... Well, uh, testing in the United States is typically done through practitioners. Uh, laws vary state to state. There are some states that allow you to come right to a testing lab like us and get, uh, get the testing done directly. But typically, you're going to your practitioner and you're going to request that they do uh, or that they authorize a test through us. You can find information on our website, which is quicksilverscientific.com. 
uh, and you can pass that on to your practitioner. The practitioner will contact us and get the necessary kits for doing the collection and submission of the samples. So would I say, I want to get a heavy metal test from Quicksilver Scientific Lab, is that what I would say to my doctor? Yes. Or would I say, I, I want to get a specific kind of heavy metal test? Or? Well, you would tell them that you want a mercury tri-test from uh, Quicksilver Science. So it's a tri-test because there's three. The tri-test because the blood, blood, the blood, the urine, and the, urine. And the hair. Yes. Okay. And it would be helpful to bring them something from the website and show mm -hmm. them how to get there. They'll often want to just do what they're used to doing, and so you might have to be a little pushy. A little bit. Okay. Be specific. That always helps on the consumer side. Yes. So the last question here is... Um, how, you know, I'm thinking about my brother in Atlanta, how does a person find um, a doctor or probably a naturopathic doctor who would understand uh, what you're doing and maybe even be familiar with your, with your protocol? Well, one of the ways is to uh, contact us through our website and ask if we have any practitioners we w work with in your area. If we know one, uh, we can direct you to them. And uh, as, we build, as we're building our website, we're building a list of uh, practitioners we work with. Uh, otherwise, it's good to uh, look for practitioners that uh, are naturopathic, integrative, or functional medicine practitioners. These are the ones who are most associated uh, or most familiar with detoxification practices. Functional medicine is uh, an offshoot of allopathic medicine where uh, they're very interested in the uh, biochemical individuality of the person. They do a lot of testing and they do a lot of supporting of the body's natural means for detoxification or if, say it's a hormone problem, supporting the, the body's natural hormonal systems. Uh, integrative medicine uh, is a little bit more alternative uh, and it's more uh, like naturopaths would uh, would use. Uh, but any one of those designations there, naturopathy, integrative medicine, or functional medicine, will get you into the right arenas.